Hello, in this video, I'll be talking about some of the complications we can see after breast cancer surgery. And obviously, if you've had reconstruction where tissue's been taken from your abdomen, you can, of course, have complications associated with that procedure. So I'll be talking about some of the more common things that can happen after surgery, things we expect we see more often, and then some of the less common complications. The hope is that this helps you feel not so unusual, and also so that you feel that we know what you've been through. And then I'll talk a little bit about how these complications get managed. So around the time of surgery, if you're having your lymph nodes dissected or looked at, you will be on your back and your arm will be raised over your head like this. And depending on the length of the surgery, your arm may be raised up over your head. It's in a cradle and it's cushioned, but it could be that way for as long as an hour or even two hours, depending on the extent of surgery that you're having. As you can imagine, if you've ever woken up from sleep with your arm over your head, that's not a natural position and it can be quite uncomfortable. So you can develop decrease in the range of motion of your shoulder, where your shoulder isn't able to move around as much. Or perhaps you can't raise your arm up to your side, from your side in that direction. It's really important that you let your medical team know if that's happened. They'll ask you about it, most likely. But if you notice that, it's really important to get some range of motion exercises some people need to see a physical therapist to help them. One of the things I've noticed my patients will do is if I ask them to raise their arm up, is they'll raise it up but they'll tilt to the side because actually raising it straight up can be really uncomfortable. So when you're following yourself at home, monitoring yourself, or if you're a caregiver or family member, friend of somebody who's had surgery, it's important once you get the medical okay to start raising the arm up. Some of my patients are given instructions to stand about shoulder width from um, a window or wall and slowly creep the arm up. What you're trying to do is naturally increase the range of motion. You don't want it to be harsh or premature, but you also don't want to wait too long. If we wait too long, the shoulder can get what's called frozen. So you can have a frozen shoulder. And if that happens, you'll actually most likely need to f see a physical therapist or an occupational therapist, depending on who your surgeon or radiation oncologist refers you to. So why does this happen? Well, in part because your arm's been in a funny position for a while, but also because after surgery, we don't, um, don't want to move the shoulder, right? We, we get guarding of that shoulder. So it's important that as time passes that you get some more range of motion. So that's one of the most common complications or follow-up effects of surgery. It's not really a complication when we see it in nearly everybody. A couple other things that we can see quite often after surgery is, well, think about this. We're taking tissue out of the breast or from under the arm, and we say nature abhors a vacuum. Nature doesn't like to see things missing, and so our bodies will naturally fill in the area that's been um, sort of carved out by removal of the tumor or the lymph nodes, and fluid and blood can fill in that hole. That's really natural. It's a natural process of healing. But you may notice that you get tenderness or swelling or fullness in the breast or under the arm, we don't always know if that's from blood or more um, normal tissues like serum or normal fluid filling that in. And your doctor, your surgeon in particular, can have you seen in the office, either by the surgeon or nurse practitioner or a physician assistant. They can actually remove that fluid with a, a small needle that goes into that area and then a syringe can pull that fluid out. And that can lead to a lot of relief if you have that, either pain or swelling or a feeling of fullness. I've had a couple patients describe sloshing of that fluid in the breast or under the armpit. Don't, don't wait to call to get that taken care of. If you live a long way away from your surgeon, 
you may not be as eager to go back, but you can get a lot of relief of symptoms. It does not mean your body is not healing properly or that the surgeon did anything unusual. It's just a normal reaction. You might hear the word hematoma if there's a collection of blood, the root word hema, H-E-M-A, or seroma, serum, filling that in. And oma is just any collection or uh, lump of anything. And just know this is, it's not all that common, but it's also not uncommon. If that happens to you, most of the time this will just need to be addressed once, but occasionally people will need to have this taken care of more than once. I think it's good to know that that can happen, that it's a normal consequence of removing tissue. And as I mentioned, it can happen both in the breast and in the armpit. I see it more often in the breast, but it's not uncommon to have it in the area where lymph nodes were removed. Okay, so we've talked about stiffness and decreased range of motion in the shoulder. We should talk about pain. Um, you know, we would love it if you had no pain after surgery, but of course pain happens. When a uh, scalpel goes through skin, you're going to have disturbance of the nerves and that can lead to pain. You will most likely not need to take str strong medicine like opioid medicine or narcotics. We try to avoid those for lots of reasons. One is they have side effects and the second is because you don't need to have those medications in your household. Now the exception is if you've had reconstruction using tissue from your abdomen or your back or your gluteal muscle on your butt, that kind of surgery can hurt more. And it's not uncommon to leave the procedure, leave a hospital with a couple days of pain medicine. If you don't need it, you should not take it. But if you're in a lot of pain, don't hesitate. And then when, you're, when you've recovered from the surgery and the pain's gotten better, you should discard the medication. You can take it back to a pharmacy, you can take it back to your doctor's offices. There are places that will collect unused medications because we don't want these meds to get in the hands of our partners, our children, our grandchildren. We know that can happen. And we're making really strong efforts to try to avoid contributing to narcotic or opioid dependence. We can, find, we can treat pain other ways as well. You can put ice on the area that hurts and you wanna not put the ice right on your skin because if the nerves are affected, you might not feel when the ice gets too cold and can actually hurt your skin. So I recommend, and most of my surgical colleagues recommend, that you watch the time that the ice is on your body and also use a cloth like a tea towel or a hand towel between the ice and your skin. While you might be tempted to use heat like a heating pad, heat doesn't usually help very much. It actually brings um, more blood to the skin and it can actually cause more throbbing and more pain. But if ice doesn't work for you, you can alternate ice with warmth. As with the ice, do not leave it on your skin. You can actually develop serious burns if you keep a heating pad on your skin because your heating pad, your skin won't sense when the heat gets too warm. And if you fall asleep with a heating pad on, you can actually get some pretty serious damage. So either make sure you stay awake or like I said, use a cloth between the heat source and your skin and really watch the time. Try not to fall asleep. And again, most people find ice is more helpful than heat. So we talked about range of motion being decreased. We talked about fluid collecting, either blood or serum. We talked about pain. The other thing I want to talk about is swelling in the arm on the side of your lymph node surgery. It's much less common to have a swelling after just a couple nodes have been removed, like sentinel nodes, and after breast surgery. More common, the more lymph nodes are removed, but it can happen in any of these circumstances. You may have heard the term lymphedema. That's when lymph um, fluid can't get back through the normal channels to go back into circulation. So just like we have a blood system running through our whole body, we have a parallel system uh, called the lymphatic system. And the lymphatics can get disrupted when you have surgery 
so the fluid can't drain back through your body. I think of the lymph and the blood system kind of like the railroad tracks and a canal, and they run side by side and things go back and forth between them. The lymph fluid is actually fluid from your butt blood that goes into the lymphatics and then comes back. It helps fight infection. But if the fluid can't come back into the bloodstream, you can get swelling of your hand, your forearm, or your upper arm, or even of the breast itself. The breast can get lymph fluid accumulating in that. It's not all that uncommon to see somebody who wears a bra noticing the bra lines on the side of their breast surgery compared to the other side. If your rings start to get tight, or if you notice some tightness where your watch sits, or if it's on the other side, you just notice your arms getting a little um, fuller, or your upper arm, or like I said, the breast. That might be lymphedema. It's hard to know without actually seeing somebody. The key thing to lymphedema is that it is treatable. So it's quite uncommon these days to see serious lymphedema that affects people's function, their ability to uh, carry their bag or a computer. But we do recommend that you not carry a heavy purse or briefcase or computer bag on the side of your surgery. Whether or not you have lymphedema, we just want to keep that fluid moving through really well and try not to have that happen. Lymphedema usually happens soon after surgery in the following weeks to months, but it can actually occur many years later. So if that's happened to you, you're not so strange that it's never been seen, but usually we see it early on. The way we treat that is with physical therapy, with arm movements, sometimes with a glove or gauntlet it's called, if it goes from your fingers up to your wrist or an arm sleeve. And there are more and more things we're learning about that can help decrease lymphedema. Finally, the last thing I'll cover is that if you have extensive surgery, no matter for what procedure, you are at slightly higher risk of blood clots. So if you're in the hospital and you're a smoker and you're bedridden for a couple days after surgery, your physicians will most likely put you on a blood thinner that they'll inject under the skin for a couple days. We don't have to do this with most people, but if you have a longer procedure, if you have other risk factors, like you've had a history of blood clots, or like I said, you're a smoker, you may be offered a blood thinner, and if you haven't, feel free to ask. Say, should I be on a blood thinner to avoid getting blood clots, usually in the legs or uh, in the pelvis, and we can't always tell. We also try to get you up moving as soon as possible to prevent that. Some people can get infections, and that's quite serious. If you get redness or swelling, painfulness along the surgical incision, you should call your doctor. Um, certainly if you have drainage that's more than you've been told to expect, that could indicate an infection, and it's important to be seen by your medical team. More and more, you can take a photograph and send that into your doctor's office through the portal, so it doesn't always mean you have to drive all the way to the hospital but infection is not something you want to take lightly. Actually, none of the things I've covered do you want to take lightly. This is all going on in your body, and obviously we care about you and your experience before, during, and after surgery. Never hesitate to call. You're never bothering your medical team, and if you don't hear back when you think you should, call again or send a portal message. Keep reaching out. I hope it's been helpful. If you like this video, click like and subscribe, and then other, way, uh, other people going through the same thing you are are more likely to find the video.